I am incredibly disappointed with the new Netflix series Exo Kitty. And before I explain my reasons why, it's a series about a girl named Kitty from the West that goes to South Korea to meet her boyfriend, but also to learn about her mother who passed away that studied at a school called Kiss. As a South Korean, I felt like the premise of the show had tremendous potential because it could really show us the difference between the Western dating culture and the Korean dating culture. This could have turned out to be an amazing Romeo and Juliet story because almost every Korean parent would never allow their child to date in high school. That is a fact. Academic pressure is extremely intense and can competitive where South Korean students are expected to study at least 13 hours a day. So topics such as suicide, academic pressure, or toxic conservative values held by Korean parents could have been addressed, but yeah. Instead, do you know what we get? We get this. We don't do this, by the way. It felt like I was watching a school in America with Western dating standards that just had a couple Korean actors that spoke a little bit of Korean. For example, making out in the library, uh, we don't do that in South Korea. You might make out in private, in your room, or in the comfort of your own home, but in the library, we don't do that. We study, we the Asian, we the Korean, we study. Also, not a single Korean parent was against any of their kids dating in high school. I have never seen such supportive Korean parents in my life. Okay, there was a scene where Yuri's mom says like, I'm proud of you. We don't do that. We like Korean parents never do that. Korean parents compare you to other kids and tell you you're never good enough. So the words I'm proud of you are absolutely unheard of. So for those of you who don't know the story, Kitty gets accepted to kiss a high school in Korea, the same school her boyfriend Day attends to. So she travels to Korea in hopes to surprise her boyfriend. Once arriving in South Korea and on her way to kiss, she gets hit by a car by a girl named Yuri. Once getting hit by a car, instead of asking for the number plate and reporting it to the police like a normal person, she goes, hey, can I get a free ride? Like, I know you just hit me with a car, but like, can I get a free ride? Kitty then surprises her boyfriend Day, only to find out Yuri, the girl who hit her with the car, is dating Day. Now, Yuri is the most unlikable character on the show. Spoiled, entitled, treats people around her like trash, and uses Day to be in a fake relationship with him to hide the fact that she's gay from her mother. Which means even though she's never had feelings for Day and is in a fake relationship, yet continues to belittle Kitty and prevents her from getting closer to Day. Not to mention stealing the necklace Kitty gave to Day by putting it on herself and blackmailing Day by saying you have to keep dating me or else she'll try and get Kitty expelled. Now for the character Day, he was the most frustrating character in the series. The amount of times he said I can explain instead of clearing a misunderstanding with a simple sentence wanted me to punch my screen. For example, are you dating Yuri? I can explain. Okay, explain. There's so many things I want to tell you about. It's a simple question. Are you dating Yuri? Can we go somewhere where we can talk? You can talk here right now. I can explain. If he could have just said, Yuri and I are not dating, we're in a fake relationship, that necklace, I didn't give it to her, she stole it, it would have changed everything. But because of his poor communication skills, he ends up losing Kitty in the end. The only likable character on the show and the only reason a lot of people watched the show was because of Minho. And I mean, for obvious reasons. Damn. Minho is a character who first found Kitty annoying, but after spending some time with her, slowly developed feelings for her. And also, saved her from getting on fire. Long story short, Kitty goes to Korea to meet Day, but then leaves Korea liking Yuri. Yeah, what? In the beginning, because Yuri was clearly the antagonist and because she was mistreating Kitty, it just made me want to support Kitty more. But the very moment Kitty started to develop feelings for Yuri because of the fact that she told Kitty to drink some water is asinine. I am not making this up. Kitty developed feelings for Yuri, started to have a crush on Yuri when she was drunk because Yuri told her to drink some water. So she hit you with a car, stole your precious necklace, took your man and it at one point try to get you expelled, but because you told her to drink some water, you start to develop feelings for her? What? Thanks, Netflix. I like Kitty's character in the beginning because I genuinely try to root for the protagonist, but she did make some questionable decisions. For example, she found out her roommate was filming her while she was sleeping, and instead of reporting it to the teachers or higher authority so that the roommate can receive the consequences accordingly, she just says, oh, I'll just sleep at the boys' dorm and risk getting expelled if I'm ever caught. Or sneaking into a hospital room and try to find files about her mother is illegal, then playing dumb when she gets caught. Or the time she starts getting intimate with Yuri, low-key kind of flirting and getting intimate, having like that sexual tension increasing with Yuri, despite Yuri having a relationship with Juliana and also at the time, Kitty had a relationship with Day. Not to mention she fell into cupcakes, falls to start a fire, or tells the teacher there's a party and she's drinking, which results into the party being ruined with everyone getting in detention. It's just little moments like these that make me find it very difficult to root for Kitty, let alone just like find her likable. So in the end, it was a series where I couldn't really root or support a single character in the show. But I will at least give Netflix some form of credit for at least trying to express Korean culture in a positive light. Such as the scene with Kitty asking for directions in Korea is true. We like to mind our own business and do not like to interact with strangers due to cults in Korea. Kitty being filmed while sleeping by a secret camera is a very problematic and sensitive topic in Korea as it is absolutely frowned upon, yet a huge problem with people filming women in public without their consent, so I appreciated Netflix to subtly bring forth this issue. I also appreciated Minho using skincare, like normalizing that men can use skincare 
skincare and men can take care of themselves without being labeled weird or gay because that is the cultural social norm in South Korea that a lot of men do take care of themselves. And Yuri being gay and believing she will be shamed for it by her family or that she's unable to truly be herself is also very true since South Korea is still a very conservative country. And I did appreciate Netflix using Korean music such as K-pop, although I felt like sometimes the K-pop was a little bit too much and I would have appreciated it if they used a lot more K-drama OST, but nevertheless, I did appreciate that they highlighted Korean music. And although I'm grateful for Netflix to try to spread South Korean culture in a positive light and really just try to show its culture, I do think it comes with inaccurate and false depictions from time to time. For example, Minho having a situation ship is a situation you will only find in the West. I guarantee you, you will not see South Korean high school students just casually in situationships. That does not happen. South Korean students normally just study before school, during school, after school. South Korean students just have no time to be in a relationship, let alone just in a casual situationship. They just study. They All they do is be the doctor and study. Or when Minho hosted a party and a bunch of students having a party in high school and not telling their parents and drinking alcohol is the most American thing I can think of. Let me make this clear. Korean high schoolers do not party, or right? They don't have time unless they're like a complete dropout, like bum. Like they know that their future is like a bum. They have no time to party. Or when Kitty went to the hospital and just casually had a conversation with a nurse in English, that will rarely ever happen. They either get a translator to speak for her or they tell her, I don't understand what you're saying because not everyone in Korea is fluent in English. Oh, and not to mention, Koreans are extremely judgmental. So from how you dress, how you act in public, Koreans are gonna judge you. Like it is what it is. So when Kitty just screams randomly throughout the series and gets on the top of a table and just starts making a speech about a mom who nobody cares about, this is not high school musical and you will just look embarrassing. These these are literally the quotes Kitty says. It's where I learned about my mom. I found her favorite tree. I learned she can play guitar. Bruh, you are standing in front of the entire school where the principal and the teachers are looking at you. You're standing on top of a table, screaming out your lungs, talking about your mother's favorite tree. Really, bruh? Really? I did like how when Yuri said that she was gay, that she couldn't really be herself and felt like she wouldn't be accepted by her parents. I did appreciate that. But when she came out to her mom, her mom didn't disown her, verbally abuse her, or try to send her to church anti-gay camp. She was just pretty chill about it and still loved her by the end of the series. So although I appreciate Netflix for really highlighting a serious issue Korea still has, it didn't really highlight the severity of it because the mom, at the end, she was like pretty chill and was like, you're gay? Like, I still love you, bro, it's chill. There's also issues of discrimination towards foreigners, racism, strict toxic parents that could have been addressed. But again, if Netflix was just intending the show to be made for kids, then I understand why it wouldn't be displayed. But the biggest disappointment to me was the show not showing the culture cultural gap between Western dating standards and Korean dating standards. A cultural gap example is hugging your friend that is the opposite sex. Now in America that is completely normalized, but in South Korea that's just like, they'll never understand that. It's like, how can you hug your friend that is the opposite sex? Like if you're gonna hug them, then that means you're clearly interested or like you're intending to date them or you are dating them. That's how Koreans think. Now in terms of dating, a cultural gap example is a Western dating show like Love Island and a Korean dating show like Singles Inferno both have similarities of attractive people coming together with their shirts off and interact with each other. But if you watch the shows, you can clearly tell the cultural difference of how they talk, how they flirt, make the first move, etc. Now in general, in Korea, people are a lot more reserved. Whereas in America, you know, like white knight stand, situationships like all of these are like very normalized and it's a social norm but when you watch exo kitty it felt like there was no cultural difference of dating whatsoever and it just purely felt like a school in america overall although i am grateful for netflix for presenting south korea to a global audience in a positive light however i just wish it was a little bit more realistic this show had a lot of plot twists and i can understand why some people find it interesting to me personally uh, a lot of scenes were low-key cringe but you know, to each their own, if this was intended for kids, I could understand why, you know, they did what they did. But yeah, thank you for watching. This is just my opinion. Feel free to disagree. Uh, comment down below what you liked, what you didn't like about the show. And this has been your boy KC. And yeah, till next time.